I have a double oven controller board that we're gonna be fixing today. So we have a couple issues. The customer, when they brought in the device, they stated that the oven was working perfectly, there was no problems with it, but they smelled something burning. So they opened it up, took the controller board out, and this is what they noticed. So because this is a double oven controller board, the circuit board is the same on the top and the bottom. It's kind of a mirror image. And the resistor that was supposed to be there is essentially this one over here. So this is a 221 ohm resistor. We're gonna be installing a new one in here, but also we're gonna to have to tackle the issue that caused this in the first place. Now the customer stated, again, that there was no other problems, but looking at the board, which I did take a sneak peek, I did find a couple of things. A few things I wanna show you are cracked solder joints. So we have over here, this is the backside of our relay. We have a crack forming around the joint. So you can tell right here, there's a little ring. Now if we look at a good joint like this one, there's no ring. This one has a ring. And I noticed that in a few other areas. So this is actually right here. This is the back of our resistor. And actually, if, as you can tell, it's kind of loose. And over here is the other leg. It connects over here to this pin. Now this pin also has a ring around it. And, well, it's not moving. I thought it was gonna move, but uh, it does have the a ring around it. So we do have a crack there, which is this pin over here, pin one, I believe, of this connector. So what we're gonna do is reflow all of those cracked solder joints. Uh, and then there was actually one more, which is for one of our elements here, I believe. And this is extremely loose, I noticed. On the back, same thing, we have a ring. So these pins are actually completely loose. And if I push on it on the back, you'll notice the pins are just free floating. They're not making any contact whatsoever. So we have a lot of issues like that across the board. So we'll start with the resistor replacement and then we'll go across the entire board and just reflow all of the cracked solder joints. So first thing I'm gonna do is add some fresh solder, get good flow, and I'm gonna try and push that pin through. So I'm gonna grab the pin from the uh, front side with my tweezers and then at the same time desolder from the back side. All right, there we go. So that's our first pin and our second pin over here. All right, and that's our second pin. We'll go ahead and clean off the excess solder with the desolder wick. Now, before I install our replacement, I am gonna do a little cleanup. I just wanna get rid of some of the charring it can be conductive, I believe, or at least that's what I've heard. So I just wanna make sure we're not gonna get any shorts of any sorts to any other components nearby, which I don't think we would, but. All right, and that should be good enough. The rest, we're not gonna get. All right, and now we'll put some fresh solder. We'll cut off the leads and we'll clean up some of the flux off. Now with the desolder wick, I did actually desolder a little bit of the solder that was here, but that's not gonna make a difference or be important. So we'll leave it as is. And now we'll start reflowing some of the cracked solder joints. So we had this guy I wanted to take care of. And I'm gonna start by adding some fresh solder to it just so we can get some good flow and then I'm going to remove it all with our desolder pump. I guess it's probably not necessary, but I do like to put fresh solder uh, whenever we have cracked solder joints. Technically, I could put just some flux and reflow the whole thing, but I don't know, I just have it. Prefer to put my leaded solder on there instead. So we have a few over here. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of solder to all the joints first, and then we'll desolder it all. And we're just gonna brush off some of those little bits of solder that just came off from the 
to desolder pump. All right, and now we'll add that fresh lighted solder. Same thing, a little cleanup with our isopropyl alcohol and toothbrush. So for the sake of video, I'm gonna do this one off screen since it's the exact same thing just on the other side. And we'll move on to our last piece, which was over here, right? So the connector for the heating element, I believe it was. So it's completely loose, same thing. Go ahead and add some fresh solder first. All right, and now that piece is very sturdy. It's not moving at all because we have our fresh joints over here. All right, so that concludes our repair for the oven controller board. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.